Okay, over the past couple weeks, there have been uh, headlines of men behaving badly. We've got Arnold, his love child, Dominique Strauss Kahn, mm -hmm. allegedly trying to force himself on a hotel maid, still facing charges from that. And why, why, why are so many people looking for love or maybe lust <laughs> outside of their own bedrooms? Well, Christine Nightingale is the owner of Premier Match. She's an expert when it comes to these matters of the heart or lust, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Christine, you know, this Arnold thing, I mean, so many people across the country were so shocked to hear this. Yeah. But then you hear about people maybe that knew him a little better, not so shocked. I mean, I heard a, a comment from Jane Seymour. She said that she wasn't surprised. She'd heard rumors. So, I mean, uh, you know, are there ways that we could detect things going on? Should we have, you know, opened our eyes to things? <laughs> well, first of all, I, I contacted a friend of mine that's a New York private investigator and asked him about the telltale signs that a woman should look out for. I bet he gets a lot of requests to go snoop around. Oh, yeah. It's his full-time job now. That's how busy this man is. Wow. So, um, so I asked him, what are the telltale signs? So, so he told me, okay, some of them are just the, the obvious. Okay. Okay, if there's now a sudden um, absence of the wedding ring. If your husband isn't wearing his wedding or what's going on with that, he always misplaced it. You've been married for years. There's not, he's kind of sk skipping around the issue. Um, another uh, is his work schedule. Has it suddenly changed? Mm, that's a good one. Is he now working a lot of evening hours? Oh, are there business trips that have suddenly come about that, um, that he needs to go out he of has town to go. for he days? He has to go. Oh, yeah. Now, um, I mean, we're kind of being a, a little unfair because we're picking on the men because, <laughs> you know, there's two men in the news that are very well known and this has happened to, but this could, this could happen with women too. Oh, absolutely. And it does. It's become actually more prevalent in the past 10 years. I think because of women that are in the workforce, uh -huh. we're a lot more independent. So um, there have been a lot more cases where women have entered into affairs. Actually, my friend also said that 50% of marriages in this day and age are going to be touched by an affair at some point during the course of the marriage. 50%. That's yeah. huge. Wow. wow. Yeah, and only a third of the marriages actually make it through this type of trauma and carry on. So it's, 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 it's really hard. upsetting. It is hard to carry on after that. So, you know, those kinds of things, lipstick on the collar kinds of things, but, you know, that's <laughs> traditional. But what do you do then if you, you know, if, if it's happening in your life? Mm -hmm. Should you confront that other person? Or, you know, like you said, the private detective kind of thing. That's I, another way to go. Yeah, I mean, you really need to make sure you have all your facts in order, really concrete evidence um, in place before you confront your, your spouse about an affair. Because, I mean, look, we can all assume certain things, right? But if there are telltale signs above and beyond the wedding ring and so forth, if there have been strange texts going on, phone calls in the middle of the night, lipstick on the collar, <laughs> you know, those types of things. So, yeah. are, are there any ways that you can tell before you're really hunkered down a relationship that someone has the cheater genetically in, you know, that, that, that kind of thing, the vibe within them genetically, it's going to happen? Can you tell? I, well, you know, the, it, is, it has been determined that there are certain behavioral um, tactics that people do carry on in, in future relationships. I mean, if you were the mistress in a relationship and he leaves his wife for you and then you end up marrying this gentleman, I would be really questionable whether or not years from now is he's going to go ahead and repeat that behavior and I then become the victim and right. he has another mistress. Well, once a cheater, always a cheater, right? <laughs> We've heard that before. Well, you know something, I think there's also a trend where if people marry very young and they've been married for years and years and the boredom sets into the relationship and they have children and they're sort of stuck in a marriage that they're not um, in love or, or have passion anymore, I think people are going to be more inclined to enter into an affair because of the uh, loss of passion and sex and everything else. Um, I think if people do wait and marry later in life, that they're, they've grown into knowing who they are as individuals, mm -hmm. and um, the marriages will be a lot more healthy. Yeah, because there's so much change unions. that happens. If you think about when you're yeah. 20s, yes. how many changes you'll go through just, you know, finishing college, getting new jobs, mm -hmm. you know, having new friends. You change so mm -hmm. much right there. Mm -hmm. Whether you're married or not and you have that yes. love, you're going to change in front of each other and may not be the same person that, you know, you first fell in love with. Well, exactly. And, you know, with my matchmaking business, I interview people every day. And they all have reasons why they're single and they're searching once again to meet somebody that's going to be a companion or um, hopefully a, a spouse in the future. Um, a lot of them tell me that they ended up marrying too young or they married their high school sweetheart and just, you know, they grew apart and they were living parallel lives for 10, 15, 20 years. It happens. And, um... 
they're really looking now for a passionate love affair that they can carry on their lives and enjoy their lives. Speaking of a passionate love affair, let's let's throw it back to Arnold and Dominique and talk <laughs> about this. Like, here's okay. two powerful men. They could get whatever they want. They seem to have perfect lives. They have money. They have, you know, women that love them. They have family. What is it that makes them want to do what they have? Well, in one case, what Arnold has done, we don't know. He's still, Dominique is still in the courts with allegedly he did or didn't do. But what is it that drives them. What have you heard that that'll drive a man or a woman to do that? Well, you know, they're they're older now, and I really think they're trying to recapture their youth. Mm. I really think that they end up, um, you know, having affairs with individuals that are try they're trying to, you know, get back to appearing youthful, vibrant, and everything else. I don't know. I mean, as as Arnold, ha I'm sure Arnold has had other affairs other than this woman that has produced a love child. Don't you think? It would seem. I mean, likely. If, it, it if, it's been, if it's been going that long and you think yeah. about just taking that chance with someone so close to your family already and you're able to hide it so successfully, I think I that's know. the thing. That's the key. If you're able to hide it successfully for so long, you think, I'm untouchable. Yeah. I can do this. Right. You know? Exactly. You're invincible mm. and can carry on. So if we're in a committed, we think a committed relationship. <laughs> you think? <laughs> yeah. How do we hold on to our man or woman? You know, there are some tips, right, to kind of keep that intimacy going. Well, it. it and marriages work. I mean, I'll, I've been married over 10 years. I mean, you have to keep the passion alive. You have to contribute you have to work keep, at it, right? You, right. I mean, you can't just be um, expecting to be um, given everything and not also, all, you know, do favors, be kind, um, make sure you attend to certain... Um, it works both ways. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people, they fall into these ruts and they think that they just should be catered to. And, um, and I could see why the other party could become resentful. Sometimes people just want to... Um, have that eye contact I want to spend time and want to know they want to feel that they're important in your life right and if you can make the other person feel that 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 goes a long way doesn't it oh it sure does and I mean let's face it when we first fall in love and we get married everything is new and fresh and everything but then when children come along and the daily duties and the grind of everything that's going Boy, on they in just life, ruin it huh I'm <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. But it changes. If you're like, oh, no, you're not. Yeah. yeah. It's, but it, it can change and, and create a lot of stress in a, in a marriage. And um, it's about trying to keep it going. And, and there, it, it, it requires work. It is work. Christine Nightingale, it's been so much fun to talk to you about this from Premier Match. Good to have you. Have a good Thank Memorial you. Day. You too. Thanks.